was fishes in the 50s. So today we're going to be trying to fish, we're going to be fishing for uh, giant blue cats. Uh, we want to target anything over 30 pounds, which in Virginia is called a citation. Uh, citation fish is basically a trophy sized fish. Uh, what we use first is um, I use 80 pound braided line. Um, it's a basic bottom rig with a slider and a clip for a 12 ounce weight. We use larger weights because in this river system it's tidal water and we get pretty good currents and this heavy weight allows us to keep this weight on the bottom. And then just a bead to protect the swivel from the slider. And then here we use, use 80 pound mono. Uh, you can use 60, uh, some guys even use 40. Uh, 80 is just my preference. And a Snelled BKK 10 knot circle hook. Um, I love the BKK hooks. Uh, the gap is wide enough for my large pieces of bait. Um, the eye is bent that allows the bait to sit level uh, in the current. And then it also has their sharpening system. Uh, this very, very sharp hook allows us to set the hook on the very tough skin of the blue cat. Uh, reel wise, we just use medium to heavy strength bait caster. This here is a pen squall. And here I've used a medium action ugly stick um, for the back of the boat. And the front boat will have some rods. We'll use medium to heavy so that they don't bow from the current as much. This is the mud chat. Gives a chat. This is what stays in the river year round. So this is number four in this pole. But like when the water heats up, like um, they lighten up in color. Hmm. And it's a super fragile fish. They will die on you in a heartbeat. And when they die, they slime up like immediately. So I try to take care of not killing them when I take them out of the net. Because mm -hmm. I want to keep them alive. Sometimes, but that's my way. And what you do is you take your hook and you want to run it through the meat of the body and then out this way. This keeps the bait on the hook as long as possible. This falls right off. The uh, hickory shad's main forage is what? Just other bait fish? Mm -hmm. Like minnows. Okay. Um, things like that. We have a lot of glass minnows in this river system. Okay. And then gizzard shad mm -hmm. eat mud. Literally, mud. So you can see this is all mud from a gizzard chat. And they have a preference over the hickory shad, it seems, because... Because they, the hickory shad is only running up here for three months out of the year. Uh, your gizzard chat is here year-round. It's just their base uh, of the food chain for the entire river system. So when you have the spawning herring, hickory shad, American shad, um, it's a different type of food source, uh, more protein um, rather than plant-based. And they use it for pre-spawning. They gorge on those for pre-spawn and then they will spawn in June. Um, just like a largemouth bass or anything else, they just get bigger and bigger until pre-spawn. So in about 30 to 60 days, we'll have the biggest catfish for the year of easily a lot of 60s, 70s, and 80 pounders. So when you see the quick hits, that typically the smaller fish trying to position the bait. Fighting these larger fish, you want to, the, 
of the rod into your leg for leverage. decent. The most important thing is to just take your time. If you set the hook, very rarely will they pull the hook. Let's deal with yours. Okay. No, you're good. No, you're good. So these catfish are just fine sitting on the deck. Yes. They're tough fish, aren't they? Catfish will sit in an ice box alive for eight hours. This one's smaller. God, that one, the rod. So how big is that one? How big did that go? about 17 18 all right now what about this one very clean um he might hit 50. he might hit we're gonna weigh him wow so cool. so see when you look at the catfish teeth they're made for gripping and not tearing so it's more like a sandpaper they won't harm you catfish are known for their stingers blue cat stingers after they get about 10 or 12 inches long the skin covers their skin stingers they don't need it as a defense mechanism anymore. But that is a very clean James River, Chickahominy River blue catfish. Are you ready? Ready. So with these bigger cats, they create so much bite pressure, you want to use a glove. fish is in the 50s we'll get a good weigh on her see how much she weighs so looking at the head the head is wider than the body and that's a sign of a male the female heads are a little narrower 
uh, than the male heads. The male heads typically protrude further out the body. You can hear them burping. That's from pulling them up from deeper water. We want them to evacuate all the air out of their out of their bellies. We want to make sure their bellies are soft before we release them. If their bellies are hard and full of air, they can't dive and they'll die. We call them floaters. We actually have a small PVC pipe. We'll put down their throat to burp them if they can't get their bellies soft. This is when they start flipping. Ah. What is she read? 44. 44 even. Really? That's a very big 44. It looks bigger. Off he goes. Get him under control. What's that fight? What's that? Female. See the head's a little more narrow. So do you always get them in the corner of the mouth like that? 90% of the time, 90? yes. Mm -hmm. These BKK hooks are really good at getting through that tough skin. Size. Right around here? This goes 20... 21. We call these teenagers. So when we set up uh, our spread, we use six rods off the back and we'll stagger the distances a short, medium, and long distance to keep the poles, keep the line from tangling up because the current will pull them all together at the same distance. Focus mainly off the back of just hickory shad and just like this. One pole in the water, one hit. We must have hit him in the head. <laughs> that was not longer than 10 seconds. No. And it's on a flat too. Swimming right at me. Here he comes. Not huge.
That's sick. That's a good shot there. So we're we're setting up in this spot here. Um, it's got a couple things going for it. We have a pier coming out that creates a little bit of structure. Just beyond the pier, there's a big brush pile. Plus, we're in a bend where you get deeper water. So. So you, you have a lot of uh, different um, things that will attract the, uh, the catfish and the bait fish will tend to sit on your ledges as well. So it's just a good fishing, high percentage fishing hole uh, is what we like to call it. So we'll see. It took 18 seconds to get our first one. <laughs> we'll see how long it takes to get our second one. We're supposed to be filming, filming Oliver today, but he had some boat issues. Um, so instead of filming uh, out with Brian and his boat, we decided to go catfishing, which he's actually a guide. Uh, his link will probably be in the description. <laughs> this is our second, second one, second biggest of the day, or was this? Exact same size. Okay. Uh. We've caught two like this today, and this is pretty nuts. I have never experienced anything like this before. 44 pound blue cat.